Hi and welcome to What's That Like? And today we're looking at The Hanging Gardens by Din Lee San. Uh, and this game was brought to our attention by Rob Harris, uh, who you may well know from Playtest, uh, and his wife Katrina. And they'd been so enthused by the game that they'd written to uh, Din Lee to, to commend him for the game and say what a great game they thought it was. And if you look at the, uh, the box, uh, it's a Rio Grande game, you look at the box, you'll see that Dinley's uh, picture and a small biography is on the side of the box. And uh, this really reminded me of uh, just how enthusiastic people are who design games and really have a passion for it. And then we, he replied to, to Rob, uh, Rob was telling us, and said you know, just how thrilled he was that they'd bothered to write to him. Uh, because they, it matters a great deal to designers that what they're putting together is reaching an audience. It's very exciting to do that. And I think it's terribly easy sometimes to forget that I think all designers believe they're creating you know, a really tremendous uh, piece of work when, whenever they put a game together. It's no small task. It's not like sort of knocking together, um, say, a, a short piece of music, for example. Um, a game can take two years to put together. Two years of hard work. And, um, and when you've done that, and you get it to an audience, I think, I think you really are hoping that it is really going to be a magical experience for them. Now, I also like to look at it whenever I see a, a game, a, a new game, or, or a game I've encountered before in this case, I like to look at, at Board Game Geek and see the ratings. And, and generally the ratings end up in that sort of region of, what, 6.5 to 7.5, somewhere between those two. Um, because you can't please all the people all the time. And uh, if you look at the top of the ratings, there's always some people who are really wowed by a game and they're giving it 10s and that's great. And if you look right at the bottom, you'll find those people who, for some reason or other, can't bear the game and give it a 1. Uh, and, and it can be very demoralising, I think, for designers to see those 1s coming in there. And in this case, with uh, this game, I think people were picking up on the fact that uh, they didn't feel that there was anything they could really control in the game. That it was terribly luck-driven because of the nature of the game. Well, I want to come back to that at the end of today's talk and just talk about a little bit more about, about designing and how it feels from a designer's point of view when you're not just looking at BGG ratings, but generally how, how you're being uh, appreciated and how you feel you're getting on with the, the passion, the hobby that you're involved in. So let's have a quick look at, uh, at this game and uh, what are the great strengths of this game. Well, it's um, I really like the way that you have uh, a very simple way of uh, developing your gardens with using the cards uh, and I really like the way you have to lay the cards one over the top of each other uh, and you're not allowed to uh, put the garden colours, those small coloured squares, you can't put those on, onto, onto blank space, you have to have a foundation of another card underneath it and I think that's a, that's a really neat system for, for developing something and of course then you have, to, you have to work out quite how you build the little sections of gardens, I like that. Um, it's a very simple collecting of tiles game. Uh, there isn't a huge amount in that, but that commends it in a way, doesn't it? Because you can't have all aspects of a game being uh, super complicated or too much time to think about. Uh, I think it's a, it's a neat enough system uh, and it drives the game quite well. Uh, and then I, I think what, what kind of lifts it to another level is that you don't have to declare a garden just as soon as you get three or four. You can wait and try and get towards six um, squares of the garden uh, so that uh, when you get the six squares you can take a, a bonus tile. That reminds me quite a lot of Alhambra of course which had that sort of bonus taking of a tile. Um, and that gives it a little game a bit of a kick and moves it forward and uh, I think it, it's rather splendid really in its own in its own quite limited way but um, I think it works really well. I'd be really fascinated to know uh, did Lee's take on it as a game? You know, I mean, how much, how much did he feel he'd really thrown his whole being into that? So going back to the the board game geek, uh, those who love it and those who, who don't like the game, it, it, it sort of begs the question. You know, what is a what is a really great game? I talked about that a little bit last time when we were talking about Spirium. Uh, is, is Spirium a great game? And I said, well, it's, it, it's a very very good game probably not a great game. Is this a great game? Well, no, I think it's a, I think it's a good game, very good game. Uh, it suits some people, doesn't suit everybody. So when you design a game like 
like this hanging gardens. Uh, what are you trying to set out to do? Well, I think it's, it's created a very sociable game here. It's a game where you're playing pretty much on your own, a little bit of interaction in terms of somebody else is getting the tile you want, but it's not really interaction, it's just a, they're getting ahead of you in the building stakes. Um, and that because it's not too aggressive that way, because there isn't too much in your face dust, you can sit there and have a really nice social evening. And for many people, that's what they're wanting from a game. And we had a lovely time with Rob, uh, and uh, Carol was playing, and myself and Gary. And um, it was just great to just sit around and, and have some pleasant time together, um, where we were not just concentrating totally on the game, but we're just having a chat and, and, and making light remarks, and, and nobody was getting too offended by winning or losing. We played it twice, in fact, so I think that's a good sign. So I think that's the type of game it is. Uh, I also think it's a game, though, where you do get a sense of achievement uh, as you go along. You do feel your garden is, is growing in shape, and you do feel you're getting the tiles. Maybe not all the tiles you want to get, but you've got a plan. And you kind of feel, therefore, that you, you're doing something quite constructive. And I think that's an important aspect whenever you play a game or, or are involved in creating a game, giving people that experience of feeling that, that you know, they're being quite smart when they're doing some game or other. Uh, so I think this is, you know, it's, it's a game that, that works well in that respect, at that level. But from my point of view as a game designer, with the Ragnar Brothers, I, I always feel that virtually every one of our games, we're trying, to, we're trying to sort of set a kind of a new, not a new benchmark, we're trying to raise the bar for ourselves, we're trying to explore really un, unusual themes sometimes, we're trying to extend the hobby if possible. I don't think Hanging Garden's got anything in it particularly that we, we wouldn't have seen somewhere else. And I'm not knocking it for that because it does give you a very secure feeling. But I, I do feel uh, games are a great opportunity for adventure. That is the real thrill of designing, is, is opening new doors, finding new ways to do things and, and seeing what, what comes of it. Unfortunately, I think it has its drawbacks because I think it means that people often see our games as perhaps a bit quirky or, or odd. And uh, we, you know, I don't think we get picked up by other uh, companies quite as much as, uh, as other people might with more regular mainstream uh, offerings. But I don't think we can change the way we are. We've been doing it 30 years, and we, we're passionate about it. And, uh, well, we hope, we hope by talking to people, we might actually engage a few more people in that adventure that we're, we're thrilled to be part of. Anyway, thanks for hearing my chat this afternoon, and I'll catch up with you soon.